So here's one more in exactly the same style as the natural log example that we just did. We want an antiderivative for arctan. We have not encountered any function whose derivative gives us arctan, so this is not a simple one-shot thing. We really can't express arctan in terms of other functions, so it's not something like, you know, when we did the antiderivative for tan and we write it as sine over cos and we substitute. There's no obvious way forward. So we give this method a shot. Let u be the whole function that we're trying to deal with. Arctan of x. And that leaves dv to simply be dx. Okay. All right. Well, then du, all right, the derivative of arctan is 1 over 1 plus x squared times dx. And v is just x. All right. So then, antiderivative for arctan is going to be uv x arctan x minus v du. So here's v, here's du, right? 1 over 1 plus x squared. Oops, sorry, times dx. Right, okay, and that leaves us with this integral to deal with. But that's one that we've encountered before, right? We know, we know how to do this. This one can be done via substitution. Maybe we don't use u, we already used u. Let's call it maybe w, right? So how do we do this one by substitution? We should let w be 1 plus x squared then dw would be 2x dx, right? So we would get x arctan of x minus 1 half integral of 1 over w dw, right? x dx is going to be half dw, 1 over w. And of course, that's the natural log. So we get x arctan of x minus one half times the natural log of one plus x squared plus our constant. And you'll notice I didn't bother with the absolute value around the argument of the log function, and that's simply because one plus x squared is never negative, so I don't need to worry about it, right? Absolute value wouldn't change anything. This technique can actually be used on all of the inverse trig functions, the same method will work if you wanted to do arc sine or arc secant. Um, you should be able to get the same sort of thing to work out, right? So why not? F quick example, if I wanted to do arc sine, I would let u equal to arc sine. So that means that du would be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Right. And v is just going to be x, right, with dv equal to dx. And so if I do that, the integral of arc sine of x times dx is going to be, it's going to be x arc sine x minus integral x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And again, that's something that you can do by substitution, right? So what you're going to get is x arc sine x. Um, let me just, I'll do it. Um, that's going to be square root 1 minus x squared plus c. I think I got the constants right there. Let's double check. If I take the derivative of that, I get 1 over twice that square root times minus 2x. It works. Okay. All right. So there's another one. Um, secant, arc secant is a bit trickier, but let's be honest. Who, who cares about arc secant, right? No, I mean, it could come up, but you're more likely to run into arc tan or arc sine.